too fast because I know I'm already very close to my final dimension. So I don't want to uh, take it off so fast that I miss it. Check for square. There we go. A little bit out of square. This side's high. The inside is high. So I'm gonna, this this blade has a slight camber, it means it's rounded this way. So if I put the middle of it, it's like a smile. If I put the middle of the blade on this side, it's going to cut more in the middle. So as you can see, that shaving. It's thickest on the outside and feathers out towards the middle of the board. That means I took a shaving that is um, twice as thick on the edge as I did in the middle and didn't take any off on the outside here. That's usually how I threw up my boards. And after I feel like I got it square, I take one right down the middle. These will have a mortars on the bottom going down into the uh, base of the wagon. Um, and my mortars is going to be interesting. The mortars is going to be like, like this. That way this can be flush with the outside of my base of the wagon. And uh, that way the rails will be flush with the outside. But this will be mortised into the uh, base. Uh, I'll show you that in a, in a little bit. It's flat. playing from both directions for ingrain, you overlap in the middle a bit. I end up being a little bit low in the middle. You just gotta train yourself to take a little bit extra. But, uh, that's fine. I don't mind being a little bit low in the middle. There we go. So I have three upright pieces cut. Uh, here's all the, uh, well, here's the uh, tenon that will go down into the top. Of the wagon, a pretty strong mortise. That's uh, what is that? I measured it off my chisel, five eighths, five eighths uh, mortise. This is where the rails will be, and the sh the long rails and the short rails, and the rails will be dovetailed inside the uh, the gap, and well inside the uh, post on the corners to just secure everything. I have three made. I'm going to make the last one here and take you along. I already cut the mortars. Very, very simple. Just a couple knife lines um, and then cut down with my dovetail saw. Uh, this is my dovetail saw. Uh, let's see. It's um, made in England. Crown, crown tools. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Pretty decent price for a dovetail saw. Uh, I just sharpened it a couple hours ago, and it uh, really changes how well it works. So first things first, is I like to, where's my pencil? <clears throat> I like to mark off where I'm gonna take material off, just to make sure I don't end up taking material off where I'm not supposed to. And I try to erase layout lines 
on parts of the piece that I'm not going to be cutting on. These two match, and these two have to match. As you can see, I already have them roughly laid out. So we're going to strike a knife line and do a cross cut here, and a cross cut here, and uh, we'll get right down to business. Okay, we're going to take a wide chisel and just wiggle it into our knife line. I find it helpful to take your knife and just trim that little bit of fibers that are left attached. Oh, I forgot to do something. I got to get my depth first. Depth of this cut will be a quarter inch, and I like using a chisel to act as like a gauge. I forget what you call these gauges in, in, in the machinist world. These aren't critical on how deep they are, just that they're flat and square. idea on the other side as well. There we go. Actually, we'll turn it around this way. And I'll, be I'll show the importance of that now in a second. Uh, these two are done. Let's lay, lay these aside. Okay. I want to turn it around this way so I could push my thumb right here which pushes the blade up against that knife wall. This is what you would call a first class saw cut. I got that term from the Renaissance Woodworker, one of my favorite woodworkers on YouTube. chisel and just hog up some of that material first thing. Be careful not to blow through this material up here. So I'm, I'm being sure to stop short. Mm. I like using a uh, dead blow hammer. That shot really sends the uh, energy into the wood. It don't let the chisel bounce. And you can control it. Just little taps. I think it's one of the best hammers out there for this kind of work. If you're not going to make like a, a nice wooden one.
and dog barking in the background. Neighbors. Giving us a clear place to strike a knife. And on both sides, it changed my estimate. Well, let's take a look at that. It's, it, it's very important to do that last step I showed you. It changes a lot of things. Uh -oh, I gotta sway. As you can see on this side, my estimated pencil line would have made the um, lap joint too big. And on this side, my estimated pencil line would have made it too small. So it's a, that's an important step if you want nice tight fitting lap joints. So we're gonna cut down that side now. Which means finishing that knife line. Set my knife in the line. I moved. Yeah, ready to cut. So let's make a nice quarter inch deep cut here. There we go. Uh, time for more chisel work. Cinch that other device tight. And let's begin to hog out some of this material here. Try not to strike through. If you don't want to strike through, something that I find helpful is to put your arm down like an anchor. So if it strikes through and the chisel wants to jump, it has to pull your arm. And uh, the, the friction on your arm will keep it in place. I find that very helpful. Alright. 
Yeah. Center this in the vise. Check depth. Okay, I got a millimeter or so to go there on that side. Now I'll just hammer out this material. Careful to not go below my below my line. Now I'm going to take a two-handed dabbing stroke it's kind of like a what well, Paul Sellers would teach just I go and uh, I I keep Picking my hands up until I feel like this is level with the bench. And that's when we decide to turn around our stock. Cinch it tight. There we go. Same thing. Put it on a line. Give it a Good little tap. Okay. Take a water chisel here now and clean this up. That's a clean lock joint. Check for depth. Very nice. And now let's check for fit. Take a nice fine cut right here. I don't mind if I blow out on that side too much. Test again. Oh, it's a nice, nice tight joint. Very nice. Okay, I'll finish this one off camera and we'll check out the next part of this joint that I have to make.